Right, Uche, I didn't know I was that much of a fire starter. <laughs> but simply saying what, we, what needs to be said, as we do here on The Advocates, no holds barred. Now let's look at spousal violence and financial independence for women. I think spousal women have been on the increase across the regions of Nigeria lately. I have wondered again and again why more women are killing their husbands. Although the men have also been doing the same, the statistics are alarming by the day. Social media is awash with gory tales and photos of women who've allowed rage and the thirst for vengeance to overwhelm them. I think at the root of the spousal killings is insecurity, financial and emotional insecurity. There are no figures to show that our foremothers were stronger than us. However, in their time, women were not maiming or outrightly killing their spouses this way. I feel they were generally emotionally stronger and it cannot be because polygamy was pervasive then. Perhaps our men should do more than one wife deliberately. Ah, don't throw stones at me yet. <laughs> the truth is that the majority of them may not be able to afford keeping a home with two, with two women in today's Nigeria. But seriously, why are postmodern women this week nowadays? I know the betrayer from a spouse can hurt badly, can be, you know, terrible. And yes, we do feel like a rug has been pulled from under us. Nevertheless, we must value our own lives more. We must value our future more. We must value our purpose more. Woman, you can't give the reins of your future and the power to rise above pain to a man that betrayed or hurt you. And this brings me to financial security. I think we should begin to socialize our girls into money management early in life. We must teach how to invest early in life so that our girls grow up financially and emotionally confident, financially and emotionally intelligent. Our mothers should concentrate more on strategy sessions for the bride on how to hit the ground running as they get married. This would be more rewarding than the many trips to the markets to pick a shoe B and souvenirs. I know it's our culture, but you, you know, don't overdo it. Times have changed. Older women must now teach coping mechanisms for housewives and career women. Our women conferences can be more resourceful than the talk shops they are at the moment. How can more women own houses and businesses? How can they scale up and have access to loans that can help to sustain them? Look, the rhythm of the music changed a long time ago. A good strategist does things differently to get the unusual delivered. I see the wife and side chick battle raging. I read the cooking wife arguments too. But seriously, ladies, all those WhatsApp groups with no particular focus are a waste of time. Let's focus on more important things like investments and scaling up our businesses. The dynamics of today's marriages are different from those of the 80s, the 90s, or the beginning of the millennium. We are formidable, we are smart, we are resilient. So let's start to deploy our energies to being stronger, emotionally and financially. These spousal killings just must stop. Let them stop because we are wiser and stronger together. I'm sorry, I jumped in so quickly, but no, let me, I'm, I'm going to far be, less to do so, with financial um, independence. Exactly, I, I was, I was so going to so comment on that one, that I think maybe emotional, but not really financial, because from what I can even see today, many women are the breadwinners now, they're, they're the breadwinners of their homes. So, emotional, so I'm, I'm looking at it marriage. and I'm thinking, so what really is the, because even when you look at the, the, um, what, what will I call it, the range, the different levels of the women doing this. It's not just in a particular class. There's a lawyer that killed her husband. There's, you know, some people are just nutty. Um, I don't even know how to describe it. But, it, you know, it goes across a, a spectrum. So I think more, it's about emotional, emotional stability or emotional maturity or whatever you want to call it. Because um, our mothers, 
like you, you mentioned, our mothers were more resilient. You know, whenever their husbands were messing up or whatever, they took their mind away from the husband and focused on the children. Exactly. You know, but here now and today, and I know what liberals will say, look, oh, the Western people brought in this no, thing. No, that, that, <laughs> it's for, not for me, it's but anyway, let me not speak for you. It's not, it's more of, uh, that's my idea. Mm. It's more of a written of marriage, really, and what marriage is. You see, um, there are some persons who would do far better well if they were not forced into marriages. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, you see, the society these days, a girl, once you are 20, 25, your parents are, oh, where are the men? Under and then you pressure. see some people are in church praying for life partner, wherever he is, release devil, release <laughs> him for me. Enemies then, release, devil then, release. Yes, and meanwhile, this, and then you see some also, some who are doing well, they have the capacity to live well, buy houses, and buy beautiful cars. They say, if you have all of these things, no man will come. And so you have this societal hangover of the husband crowns the woman. And then the man, the woman keeps herself waiting for that man. And then you marry a Tokumbo man, you know, and the problem starts. You know, because all your expectation about of what marriage is, you know, it's completely destroyed from the beginning. And so we need to begin to change all of those ideas about, look, you can be you can be whoever you want to be without marrying if you must. I can decide to have children. I have a friend, his father had four, four, four of them, no wife. And they all came out excellently well. You know, but there are some people also in the same vein who will have four children they can't take care of. And it's fight every day. I'm not saying don't get married, but if you're going into marriage, you, you know, there should be. be understanding. You know, you should know what it is. And then some people would lastly, so that I can hit the floor for a kene, oh, you no, know. Say thank you. Thank you. And, and, yes, and, actually. and then there are some. That's Imagine a woman. This one is not a first wife. The second wife number two. You know that there was a first wife before they married you. And it is the wife number two now that is jealous that eventually killed the man. Oh. You know, so no, but Liboris, let's even bring in, what about the, is it the four women that raped their husband to death because he was only focusing <laughs> on one, one wife? And then the, the rest of the wives said, nah, you can't carry on doing this. We're going to all That's do crazy. you to death. It and is. they did him to death. So again, you know, it's not even really about whether you're a second wife, whatever. There has to be some emotional um, maturity before you go into marriage. Also, maybe we now need to start teaching people anger <laughs> management because I don't know why people are getting to that point where they don't know that to walk boiling point. Away. Mm. Yeah. I, 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 I did I did an advocacy uh, I think uh, some time ago about you know values that getting into marriage it has to be people that have shared values mm. because th these are two people with different values different baggages coming into a union and sometimes you get to that point where you can't your coping, coping mechanism is stretched to a point where mm -hmm. anger and other things you know come out so you need to understand your partner whoever you're choosing you need to do some offloading understanding you mm -hmm. know knowing that you know we're not all perfect and you need to adapt to certain things you mm -hmm. know believe it because they say what you tell yourself is what becomes eventually reality. becomes you mm. know so in marriage you need to um how do i say uh you know that equation that they say uh, one plus one is two in marriage mm. one plus one is always one mm. so once you've made up your mind that look this thing is going to work you begin to find excuse for your spouse mm. things don't because like NL, nlp they say nothing means anything except mm. the meaning I mean, so when you, said, you give empowering meanings mm. you know to uh, situations you find that your marriage would Tend to but, work. Sorry, Libos, let me just no, uh, throw no, in my, no, I, I, my cover. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and what I was going to say was, when I look at marriage, because she mentioned her four mothers, and I look at, I remember my mother, my, my mom's mom, she used to call my granddad Namupu, which is like my lord. There's a certain expectation. She was powerful in the home, she handled, but she knew her own space. I'm not saying we should go back to that, but I think expectations somehow were caught between the world that used to be and, you know, the social media world, what mm -hmm. we think we should be. And so there's a lot of conflict going on in the minds of women. So a lot of times they feel abused and robbed. And then, they're, like you're saying, you and your partner are not even on the same plane. Somehow your caveman husband didn't get the memo <laughs> that you're seeing yourself as, you know, I don't know, <laughs> a Hollywood wife. Mm -hmm. So we need to sort of sync it up. And then I still feel that sometimes when you talk about financial independence, because I know someone who was advocating for that, it's almost like you're living in two, two people living in the home, but side by side. You're mm. not competing with your husband. So there still needs to be that understanding. Yeah. That in as much as you're financially independent, you can yeah. still run a common account and various things together. Well, and then someone I else see, came yes. recently, just to quickly yeah. give another illustration. 
she was saying, oh, Nigerian women who are successful, I'm addressing you. She's a friend of mine who's been on this program, so she'll probably hear this. You know, I'm addressing you. Don't go and marry Nigerians. You're not destined to marry a Nigerian man. Look for Yibo, you who are outwardly yeah. thinking, who are more oh, progressive, wow. who won't hold you down, so you won't be frustrated. And I said to her, no, because you can still find Nigerian men who, if they love you enough, they'll keep Cook up with whatever you. your aspirations are. So love is, for me, the language that transcends yeah. all of this. And if you take right. love out of marriage, you don't have to marry. It's not by force. Mm. Okay, for me, I think our women, Nigerian women, should just get it once and for all. When you marry, that man does not take over everything about you. So then he buys you everything. And, and, and you, you seem to not have a life or a mind of your own anymore. Mis so, so, so when, yes, yeah, so, so when anything happens yeah. between both of you, you don't feel like your, your life is collapse. over and how you're going to move on. Okay, I'm just going to kill you. Yep, you promised and you certainly <laughs> delivered treasure. No holds barred. After the break, we'll be keeping it frank and perhaps a little feisty. No promises though. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. 